So, uh, we'll present you uh, the, the introduction of uh, semi topological uh, approach for mean field models in the scope of dynamic and metadynamic recrystallization. Um, I credit the work uh, to, to Guillaume Smag, whose thesis was the origin of this talk. Yeah. Okay, so I will try to speak louder. So um, first, uh, a small introduction about the industrial context uh, to have an idea of the motivation of this, uh, this work. It deals with uh, open die folding for of large components in austenic, in austenic steels. You have some pictures to, to have an idea of the size. And in the process, you have uh, uh, a sequences of uh, numerous uh, heating, cooling, holding, and also uh, a lot of passes of uh, deformation. So you have a sequence of uh, Diderik's um, uh, evolution and also uh, metadynamic evolutions. Here you have uh, a typical uh, single peak curve, stress rate curve, uh, in a case of uh, the Dirac's uh, material, uh, with a transient domain, with this peak, and after large strain, a steady state, in which all the material parameters are constant in the dynamic equilibrium, so the flow stress, the average grain size, and even the grain size distribution are constant. And the steady state does not depend on the initial state. It depends only on temperature and strain rate. If these parameters are kept constant during the test. So for the question of uh, insurance quality, it's essential to master the grain size to avoid to coarse grains uh, in order to be able to make a uh, non-destructive inspection. So here yeah, it's not a question of optimization of the properties, in use properties of the, the material. So in the case of uh, metadynamic recrystallization during the holding time just after uh, straining, you have first a regime of metadynamic recrystallization in which the main driving force is the difference in stored energy and the kinetics is quite rapid, you have a log scale here. And after a regime of grain growth in which the main driving force is the surface energy of grain boundaries. And the kinetics is more sluggish in this case. Sorry. Uh, the, so the general modeling frameworks of recrystallization is um, with three kind of models, empirical fits, I think you know all these things, mean fields in which we consider a grain embedded in a, an homogeneous matrix. It's quite simple, physically based, but I will give you some issues with distributed properties like grain sizes. And it's possible to make full field simulation, but it could be very intense uh, computing for heterogeneous processes in the industrial context I've mentioned just before. So we have tried to develop a semi topological model and the main idea is to combine uh, some topology features uh, with the affordability of mean phase model without a complete tracking of the detailed topology of the microstructure. So I'm coming back to, to the paradigmatic canvas of mean field models for DDRX. The first thing, uh, it's not due to, to the, the, the recrystallization, it's just a question of, of the local description of the, the boundary condition. So, in fact, we need the strain rate in each grain. In my case, we use a simple Taylor assumption. It means that the strain rate is homogeneous, but it's possible to use whatever you want here, for example, a nice so, um, power uh, assumption or 
a complex model if you want. For dynamic uh, recrystallization, we need three equations for three main phenomena. The first, the second point in the, the model is the local constitutive equation. So it needs to, to, to model, we need to model the balance between strain hardening and dynamic recovery in the absence of, of recrystallization. It's quite easy uh, to, um, to fit it to stress strain curves before recrystallization. We need a grand boundary migration law uh, in order to model the motion of grand boundaries in uh, such a scheme in which the grain of interest is embedded in the equivalent homogeneous matrix. We need also a nucleation law for the occurrence of new grains. We have to predict the rate of this occurrence. And the last point, not directly uh, related to, to recrystallization, is uh, to have some rules for the transition scale to come back to the um, macro scale, uh, in which we have the definition of the equivalent homogeneous matrix uh, to define uh, what is uh, the average dislocation density. And also, it is a way to obtain uh, predict predictors for the flow stress, the average grain size, and so on. So all mean field models for DGRX are using this uh, canvas. To go in more details about the local constitutive equation, uh, in fact, it's possible to, to <coughs> use uh, what we, you want. The most common way is to use a one internal variable constitutive model on this internal variable is the dislocation density which is considered as homogeneous inside each grain. It's not true, but at the mesoscale, uh, you, we need to do a such assumption. It is fitted to, to stress strain experimental curves before the onset of recrystallization, so it's not so difficult to do that. It's possible to use Cox making equation, as we Jonas equation for the most popular. It's also possible to use a power law, which is very convenient in this case because it's possible to integrate in gross form all the model. On this power law equation here uh, corresponds to uh, a sweet model at the macro scale for if you consider the macroscopic flow stress. We need also the same for uh, static recovery. Uh, when, you, we, when we are dealing uh, about uh, with um, uh, holding time at a given temperature. So we use a simple uh, kinetics of order one. Uh, we need also uh, a grain boundary migration law. So uh, the, um, it comes from the thermodynamics of irreversible processes. Uh, more precisely, uh, when it is linearized uh, for small driving force, and in this case, the migration velocity is uh, considered as the product of a mobility, a material properties, times the driving force. And this driving force could be related to the stored energy for crystallization, so the difference in dislocation densities between two grains, or between one grain embedded into the equivalent homogeneous matrix. There is an also, uh, another um, driving force which is due to Laplace pressure or the tension, um, surface tension, or the energy of grain boundaries, in fact, it is the same. But as uh, grains uh, are modeled by spheres uh, um, in this kind of model, uh, the interfaces are not shared interfaces like uh, standard uh, grain boundary in a real polycrystal. So the interface area is artificially doubled in this kind of model. So in fact, he, uh, one has to divide by two the Laplace pressure in order to evaluate correctly the things. So if we write that uh, in this case, the diameter rate is uh, the product of 2m 
here you have the um, driving force due to uh, the difference in terms of dislocation density. On here you have the difference between the grain and the equivalent <coughs> matrix in terms of capillarity or surface tension. So we need also uh, a nucleation law. Uh, nucleation, it, it, is, uh, it involves uh, complex phenomena, uh, bulging of subgrain, subgrain rotations. You have some mechanism of necklace recrystallization, uh, especially in the transient regime. You can also have repeated twinning as a mechanism for, for nucleation. So it's difficult to, um, to have a very um, <coughs> precise uh, law for nucleation. So we use classically uh, a simple assumption li like that, in which the nucleation rate is proportional to uh, the average dislocation density to a certain power p. And commonly we use three for certain reasons. And also, uh, the nucleation rate is considered as proportional to the total area of green boundaries in the system. So, the sum of uh, d squared. And the last, po the last point to come back to the macro scale is the transition rule uh, to macro scale. So, it's necessary to have a uh, a kind of self consistence in the definition of the equivalent homogeneous matrix in order to uh, guarantee the volume conservation of the whole system. If we write that in the migration equation, it's possible with the migration equation to compute the volume uh, change rate. And it, we know that it is zero, so it's possible to define uh, the Average dislocation density, we have to uh, take into account in the model to uh, maintain constant the volume. And it is simply the average of rho weighted by the area of interaction between grains. So here it is the square of d because we have spheres. By the same way, it's possible to uh, define um, the average uh, grain size. We need to use in the capillarity term uh, for the migration e in the migration equation. And in this case, we have to make averages of 1 over d, weighted by always the d2. So we have the classical <coughs> equi um, critical uh, diameter in the Elot model. If you, if you want to come back to, to these um, historical uh, developments, so it's not new. And for the, the estimation of the um, uh, microscopic uh, flow stress, as we have done the Taylor hypothesis, it is simply uh, a volume fraction weighted average uh, on the local um, flow stress is uh, assumed to be proportional to, to the square root of rho. So the flow stress is obtained directly from the average of the square root of rho weighted by the d to the power 3. Um, with all these five points, it's possible to, uh, to use uh, some model to predict uh, what you want, the flow stress, the, the grain size. On doing steady state, uh, which is quite interesting uh, because uh, uh, it is uh, all the parameters are concerned, even the grain size distribution. We can use the ergodic assumption, so it's possible to estimate the grain size distribution from the history of one grain. And if you use the um, migration equation, a grain is growing up to um, rho equals uh, rho bar, and after it is decreasing. And you have a maximum. And it's, uh, in some cases, uh, the distribution of size is given by, by this. Uh, it is a closed form equation. 
in more general case, you have uh, just an equivalent like that uh, near uh, the Dmax. But at least in this uh, domain, you have always something like that in every case. And this uh, behavior is intrinsically a, a result of a result, this uh, distribution results from the deterministic uh, character of the migration law used. So if you don't want that, you have to change the migration equation. And you know, experimental grain size distribution are not like that. So it is a reason why we have tried to sorry. Uh, uh, to develop um, a semi topological approach. So the idea is to keep the simplicity on the relevance of mean field models. Do not follow the detailed topology of the microstructure as in full field models because it's too time consuming in our case. And to put some stochastics into the grain boundary migration equation. Um, to, in order to test uh, this idea, we have um, done a first trial uh, using a random spread of the grain boundary mobility, just to see. And we obtain a, a better uh, grain size distribution, but it is not enough, in fact. Or we have to have a very large spread to obtain a uh, grain size distribution similar to, to experimental results. So we have tried uh, another thing, uh, and it is the replacement of the equivalent homogeneous matrix in the migration equation uh, using one neighbor. So we replaced the migration equation by this, on using a, a neighbor uh, J which is uh, randomly selected. The connectivity uh, selection uh, is done with no consideration of reciprocity, so it is not a topology, it's a semi-topology. The neighboring relationship is fixed up the disappearance of one of both grains, but it's important to keep it. And for the volume conservation, uh, uh, there is just a compensation over the grain J when the grain I is changing. So it's quite simple because we have the volume change by this. In this way, we have a double count of migration in the average as we consider a grain as a grain I or a grain J. So we have to divide by two. So we, are, we don't have two here. Here is uh, a validation case uh, concerning uh, 304 steel. We have equivalent stresses on the average grain sizes with uh, some standard mean field model. But for the grain size distribution, here you have the with me standard mean field. In red, the experimental, and in blue, what we obtain with the semi topological thing. So it's much better. For um, the metadynamic recrystallization during a uh, holding time, here you have the experimental grain average grain size on the two kinetics coming from the standard model on the semi-topological model, so both are quite correct. And here you have a comparison with the semi-topological uh, grain size prediction on the experimental one after 300 seconds. So it's not perfect, but it's not so bad. And we have tried to make a comparison in the simple pure grain loss cases with uh, several uh, models, or a few models, available models. So um, in red, you have uh, as um, reference cases uh, a computation made by, uh, by CIMIM or DGIM, it is more or less the same in fact. I, here in blue, you have uh, our prediction with the semi topological model. 
you can compare with the standard mean field model which is much lower and here you have the Burke Turnbull estimation all these uh, computations are made using exactly the same aim on the same gamma so there is no adequate parameter here so it's possible to directly compare the, the results and the conclusion is that we, we have a strong correlation between uh, growing and shrinking neighbors in the microstructure which is quite normal yeah so just to conclude uh, I've shown some limitation of mean field models, especially for the distribution of grain size. I've described uh, the introduction of the semi-topological model. Uh, we obtained some realistic grain size distribution, at least in us in a context. And it's possible to make a series uh, co connection uh, for multipath processing. So it's a good way uh, to model sequences of uh, DDRX on the MDX stages, and it's a way to optimize microstructures in uh, the industrial processes I've shown in the introduction. Yeah, and you can have a look on this article. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>